Tell me, child. Francisco. Where do you live, Francisco? I live in São Gonçalo, Rio de Janeiro. He's here to testify that amidst the Christ, amidst those who are going bankrupt, God has looked upon him. Is it right? Yeah, that's it, Apostle. It's... So please tell me, what's going on? Show it. My life, well, it, it's very comparable to Apostle's life because it was a very uh, a suffering life since my childhood. I came to Rio de Janeiro and I had nothing. And when I first met Worldwide Church, I, I was scavenger so I, I would scavenge stuff on and street stalls uh, so we wouldn't start to death because our need was too big so we had to scavenge things to eat and my family if, if they are watching us uh, they 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 learn they're learning about it now uh, I think uh, because we didn't let it show and so uh, that one it seems your restaurant. Yes, two restaurants and a baker shop that now I own. What? Two restaurants and a baker shop that now I own. You mean scavenger? Yes, sir. The hapless. Yes, sir. The one who live in misery now has got two restaurants and a baker shop. Before I came to the World Church, I had nothing. I started working in this restaurant as cook. I would make 580 reais. When I got the job, which is already a good thing for someone who's convinced. Uh, that was already a beginning, and uh -huh. then I start paying the tithes at World War Church, and from then on, I have been faithful. Such a blessing. And God has changed my life a lot. Now I. Now you're a tall tree amidst the orchard. Okay. Surely. A rosewood tree. You know what a rose tree is. You can look 10 miles away, but you can figure out a rosewood tree. Because it stands out. That's how Christian people must be. So you were hapless. Uh, surely. You know, a street sauce for those who have nothing. Yeah, street market the solution. Yes, the end, the end of the street fair. The end. And the butcher, I remember I used to go with my sister Sonia. She was ashamed. She was already a young lady. My mother used to say, go there and when they are almost closing, wait for them. And then you ask for the bones. I heard you telling the story, but fresh. Ah, but it's really tasty. And for me, it makes no difference whatsoever. I think something good is to make a great broth. Of course, you can use old bones, dry it out, no. Now, she used to say, Domingo gets the honor of the butchery. I remember it this day. That I can get some bones for dogs. Uh, once I was upset, I told her, if you say it again, I will start barking here. Because it wasn't for dogs. Now think about something good. So you used to wait for it too. Yeah, actually. Uh, and now you look at abundance. So what do you see? God's hand, yes, right? Yes, I actually, I would go in the morning, very early, in order not to meet my ex-bosses, because they would they say, see, look at that. See, they would say, see, you're scavenging now. So I would do this to avoid embarrassment. And now my order in both restaurants is, Whoever comes asking for food, they have to give it them. For the honor and glory of the Lord. Now, many times I walk on, on sidewalk, I see people sleeping. I go home, take a bottle of two liters of mocha and get some bread and butter and I distribute them. Great. For the honor and glory of the Lord. I don't want to get praise for this. No, that's for the glory of the Lord. Those who are on the other side. Those who have abundance. I've never lived. Come over here, please. Those who have abundance have never been through this. I have no idea what it means. Then they say, ah, it's useless. 
It's useless to give him a meal today. No, you have no idea. You have no idea, eh? Right? There's a brother. Uh, Bishop Vanderlei. He's been seeing through it all. But there was a certain stage in our lives where we wish it to have food just for this day. We didn't know God back then. If I did, I would say, Lord, just give me food for today. Don't eat for tomorrow. It's, it was so hard. For someone who has nothing, you have to fix the problem now. Who has got nothing isn't worried about tomorrow. Those who worry about tomorrow are those who have a lot. Those who have, they're worried about tomorrow. But who's got nothing is worried about today. I don't live based on these things. I don't wake up late night to ask for a car or house or money. I wake up early in the morning to ask God bring you peace, prosperity and salvation. That's why I wake up early in the dawn. And if I tell you, God listens to me. And if I don't, you know it as well. Because he is to be a hapless man. A hapless man. I wonder why now he feeds hungry people. and He's got a restaurant, big shop. He's got comfort. I wonder why. Someone must pray for him in the early dawn. Someone must be called thief because of him. Yeah, of him. Actually, it's symbolic. Because many among you have already come thief but it's weak minded people for him saying that because you don't know me you don't know you don't know the struggle the anguish yeah you don't know of the aching of the man of God the womb of God, people of God. Because of you. You don't see that. No. There are things that you cannot see. You see the result that you see and you keep seeing. If you believe, you see it in your life. If you doubt, you see it in others' life. But you see it nevertheless. Nevertheless. Look at that. Ministry that God's given me is like this. If you believe, you see, and if you doubt, you see as well. If you believe, you see it in your life. If you doubt, you see in others' lives. That's how it is. If you want to believe, praise the Lord. If you're going to doubt, one way or another, you're going to get it. I would have show a person on the wit sand scavenging at the end of the street stalls presenting his restaurant franchise and bakery shop comfort that God's given him after he became a faithful sight giver of this church. Congratulations. Congratulations. Give him the Is it different now? Yeah, it's very different and now. Uh, he got three different sets. There are no 24 hours a day, and people that go there to have lunch or dinner, they see the TV turned on your channel. Some of them leave because they don't like it, but most, most of them most people like, don't it. like it. Well, so this minority, this minority, let's forget it has to exist because if everyone is alike, there will be no difference. No, there must be these people, the peanut people, to see that. There is difference in sight. It's true, sure. And now, 
I want to tell you, now, not only Brazil, but also all over the world, you are the most loved man in the human race. And by God, too, it's the most loved one for, for a human being. It's a sinner now, I imagine, being loved by God. How do you picture yourself being, not only in Brazil, but the whole world? Because there's no one that's more blessed and more loved than you. That's great, but that's, that's your heart speaking. Yeah. God bless you. What does the church mean for you? This church means everything to me. And I brought here the picture of my family in her hands. And dream. Everyone's blessed. Fulfilled. What? Give a hug to my mom. She loves you. Where You're in the water too. And I What's her name? Levina. Levina? Yeah. Levina. Send a great kiss. Taking blessings for you. God bless you.